Okay, let's get this started. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Tuesday Market Outlook session. My name is Prakash Vijayanath. I am an analyst here at Options Play. And today I will be walking you through how we are viewing the current markets. So before we get started, just a quick disclaimer. The types of securities, forms, and research tools used in this video are for demonstration purposes only and should not be considered a recommendation by Options Play or a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities. This video is not intended to be used for individual tax, legal, or investment planning advice. So our agenda for today, um, as usual, we'll be starting off with the major indices. We are seeing a bit of consolidation at current levels, not the strong rebounds that we, we have been used to over the last couple of years, wherever there's been a dip, an immediate rebound, that's not really happening in this case. Um, from there, we'll be moving on to fixed income and commodities. So we are seeing a bit of a breakout in yields, leading to bonds declining. And we are seeing oil continue its steady rise despite the recent pullback over the last two or three uh, sessions. From there, we're moving on to the sector rotational model. Uh, we are really seeing a bit of strengthening leadership here in technology, and we'll get into that in a bit more detail. We'll be covering two subsectors of interest today, and we'll end today's session with some bullish and bearish market observations. So starting off with the S&P 500, we can see here the price action has been, um, has been pretty, has been consolidating here over the last few days, right? We, we saw a strong bounce from 428 um, all the way to 453. It did breach that level, ran into resistance at around four, uh, around a 55 day exponential moving average. And for the last few sessions, it has been trading just under that 453 key uh, resistance area, but it hasn't exactly moved lower here. So that, that is somewhat encouraging, somewhat optimistic for a possible break but above this level. The fact that we aren't seeing a lot of bearish momentum, but we are seeing that consolidation here. And uh, based on this morning, futures aren't moving that much either. So we may, we may see um, consolidation for a few more days here. Moving on to the NASDAQ 100, um, definitely a better picture here for the NASDAQ 100, especially the fact that it broke up back above this uh, 353, this 353 uh, key support level. We can see price did reject the 21 day exponential moving average, but it has found support back at the 353 um, level here. And even though it is consolidating, even though yesterday's price session was quite bearish, it is managing to stay above that level. And that is, um, that's going to be major here for the NASDAQ 100, because a break below that level would indicate a further decline back to that 340 area, which was its previous um, swing low here. But if we take a look at the weekly chart for a minute, we can see here that that um, strong uptrend, that up channel, that has been broken, that has been validated. Over the last two weeks, we did see a bit of a rebound here in price, a uh, bit of a rejection there um, towards the end of last week. And again, we can see here, um, should that rejection hold, we may see further, a further pullback here for the NASDAQ 100. So on the weekly side of things, it is looking somewhat bearish. You know, this is, this is a, a very common occurrence. We see a, when you see price break below a channel, an uptrend, it does come back to retest it. And if it fails, that tends to be a bearish signal here. But from the daily time frame, I do think that this, this 353 level would, you know, it's a very important level. And I would use that as an indicator to see whether it's, whether it's broken to, to the downside, whether we will see a further decline or not. So taking a look at small caps, looking at the Russell 2000 ETF IWM, we can see here that price did break below that uh, 210 major support level. And it did, uh, you know, to the penny, went to 38.2 uh, Fibonacci retracement level, where it uh, bounced higher again with some good momentum if we take a look at the daily. Since then, price has pulled back. And again, like the, um, like the large cap names, it has been somewhat in a consolidation phase over the last three days. You know, my thesis from last week still remains intact that if we do see a strong rebound here in small caps, uh, it really does come down to this 210 level. It has been such a major area of support that um, if price you know, fails to break above that and if there's bearish price action at this level, I do think that signifies, or you know, that would point to a significant downside move here for IWM with the next support area being at that 32.8, um, sorry, at that 32.8, 38.2, I should say, uh, Fibonacci retracement level at around 
the 190, which also represents here yeah, on the daily time frame that area where it found support. So taking a look at value versus growth, we can see here that value did outperform growth, you know, for the last, um, especially early in this year, like for the last few weeks. And more recently, we did see a bit of a pullback of that outperformance. We saw growth starting to gain a bit of momentum against value. That did not last long here. As we can see over the last few days, uh, value is definitely back in the driving seat and pushing higher. Now, you know, that again, reemphasizes the theme that we're currently in with rotation out of growth and into value. But if we take a look at the next chart, which is the VIX, you know, VIX is being contained at current levels between its 21 and 55 day exponential moving average. And relative to where it was trading before, it's definitely at a better area right now at around this 23, 24 area. But over the last few weeks, as volatility rises, we have, we have seen value outperform uh, during that period. But it, and that's not unusual, right? It's not unusual to see value outperform growth in higher volatility conditions. But with the VIX being contained at current levels, while value is still outperforming, that gives us an indication that one, the weakness in the broader equity market is not as systemic as before. And two, it further com confirms the main theme in markets with money rotating out of growth and into value, even when the VIX is not rising. So we, and you know, we are seeing that we are, we do know that this year, 2022, it's not going to be as easy as last year where, you know, just put your money in the major indices, it'll move higher. I think for this year, I do think that stock selection is going to be a lot more important. It's going to be um, maybe in some ways easier to outperform major indices where we're not expecting those, you know, 20%, 25%, um, annual gains here. So uh, there's a good side to it. There's also, it is going to be a bit more difficult in many aspects here. And taking a look at yields. So yields continuing to break out. We saw a bit of consolidation after yields reached 190, 190 basis points. Um, and they did consolidate between 190 and 170, but, you know, momentum was up to the upside, higher lows here at intraday level. And we did see a break above that 190 basis point area. And it is now again, you know, looking to just continue higher here. We don't really know. There's no obvious area of resistance for, for yields, but I'll be targeting it around, you know, definitely 200 basis points as a short term target here. So definitely going to be better for the financial institutions, the banks. Uh, not so great if they continue with this, if yields continue to rise with this much, um, with this much momentum for the broader equity market. And taking a look at bonds. Bonds, we are now seeing that definitive break off that key 141 area that we've been looking at for the last few weeks. We saw a strong bearish move to that area. A lot of consolidation at this range. It did breach it, but immediately moved back above. So it wasn't a definitive break, but we, we did see you know, momentum still remain quite negative here. And now over the last few days, the, moment, the bearish momentum has increased. And if we take a look at the weekly time frame, I do think that provides a better indication as to where the next uh, target area is here for TLT. And I'd be targeting this uh, 134, 135 um, area of support where price did find support multiple times in the past. But overall, uh, bonds, again, looking bearish. And that's not surprising considering just how uh, strong yields are. So taking a look at the dollar index, you know, Looking at this chart, I do think what we saw here over the last um, few days was a bit of a false breakout. We do know that the 97 area um, was going to be this major resistance area. And we did start to, start to see, you know, a, a strong move uh, fueled by a lot of momentum, breaking above that area initially and an immediate reversal. But it was a magnitude of the reversal that actually leads me to think that there's more downside. Price has now breached below, um, below the 95 50 support area. And over the last three days, if we take a look at just the size of those candles. They are nowhere near as large as the candles of the last couple of the previous candles before that. And that does indicate that momentum is definitely on the bearish side. We are just seeing a small pullback over the last few days or retracement over the last few days. And we may see or more, more likely see a continuation lower here for the dollar index. In terms of where to next? This 94.50 area, um, I think, will be a major area of support. Price did find support there in the past and immediately bounced higher. So I do think it'll be tough to break below that support area. But I do think in the short term that um, 
the dollar index is like very likely to decline to this area just based on this bearish momentum that we are currently seeing. And taking a look at gold, so again, very, very choppy, and it has been for months now. After this initial break above 171, we saw this very strong bearish move, uh, breaching 167, and over the last few days, it's actually moved back above that once again, looking like it's heading back to 171 resistance, um, which would probably, most like many times in the past, provide a much better bearish entry, a uh, risk-reward bearish entry here for a move lower here, but very choppy. Um, you know, it's still neutral. We do have a bit more of a bearish bias here on gold. Um, but again, look for that 171 area. And from there, look for bearish price action for uh, further confirmation for bearish move here, for short-term bearish move in gold. And taking a look at crude, and, you know, we can see here, starting off with the weekly time frame, um, you know, nothing's really changed. It's, just, it's still on its uptrend, continuing to make new higher highs and higher lows. But I will say, if we take, if we draw that, that trend line for, for the higher highs, crude is now at that trend line. So the fact that we are seeing bearish price action on the daily does lead me to believe that we are in line for maybe a short-term pullback here in crude, especially when you consider that there's so many, you know, bullish can green candles here over the last few weeks that I do think that now is maybe time for a bit more of a pullback. And in terms of, and should that happen? Uh, in terms of the areas that I'd be looking at for a pullback in oil, I don't think it'll be a, a big pullback. I think it'll be a small pullback. And I'd be looking at around this 84 area here, which was a key area in the past where it provided resistance here. So look for the pullback here in oil. And from there, I do think it provides a much better risk reward entry for further long positions. And, you know, when oil rises, the energy sector tends to do quite well. That's what you, those are the types of stocks that you'd be wanting to look at should oil pull back it would give a much better risk reward uh, bullish entry for those names so taking a look at the sector rotational chart and there is a stark difference compared to uh last week over compared to you know weeks beforehand and we can see here two sectors only two sectors in the improving and leading category we have nine sectors now in the lagging and weakening category so very very narrow leadership. And, you know, the major, diff the major indices yeah, have managed to stay up. And that partly comes down to the heavy weighted tech sector. And if we take a look at the tech sector here, you know, this was in the weakening and lagging categories for multiple weeks now. And now it is showing momentum and starting to rotate um, in almost into the leading category. It looks like it could be in the leading category in a few days. And we have to remember, you know, the tech sector is heavily weighted within the major indices. When the tech sector does well, the major indices tend to do well um, as well. So right now, this does lead me to believe that maybe the rebound that we are currently seeing in the major indices may not be very healthy, as it's largely being supported only by this heavy weighted tech sector. But that doesn't mean it's an immediate bearish signal. If we saw, if we look at 2020, if we go back to 2020, we saw... Um, for the whole, almost a whole year that the technology sector was a sector that um, that helped the overall markets uh, continue higher, continue to new higher highs. And it wasn't until really the vaccine announcement that we started to see broadening participation here with the, all the other sectors providing leadership. But so we know that um, the major indices can, you know, or we know that technology can remain in the leading category for a very long time and drag the major indices higher, but it isn't a great it's a sort of great, a sort of healthy cycle, let's put it that way, because you want to see broadening participation, you want to see um, all the sectors being involved, or as many sectors being involved um, within a market rally, and not just uh, being dragged along by one sector here. And taking a look at some sectors of interest, we have the technology sector, which we were just talking about. If we take a, take a look at the price section here, couple of key levels. We have the 159 or 160 key level and the 164 key level that we actually discussed last week. Now, more recently, we did see uh, price react very positively to this 148 level, immediately bounced higher with some strong momentum, broke above uh, 159, and did um, find run into resistance here. This was the level, the key level that we were talking about last week where you know it needed to break above this 164 level to really give me the confidence of continuing higher. That does not look to be the case just yet. 
we did see a, a price reject this area and the 55 day exponential moving average. It is now back below the 159 um, resistance level, but there's not a lot of bearish momentum in this move. I think that, you know, right now, maybe it's a bit of a wait and see game. Uh, if price does can't really break above this 159 level, 160 level over the next few days, that does lead me to believe we may be we may be in store for a bit more downside here for technology. But if it does break above it, um, I think you know we will easily see that 164 level being reached. And with good momentum, we may see a break above that level and a continuation higher for technology. We do know we are starting to see that increase in momentum in technology. So you know that may well happen. Taking a look at healthcare. So healthcare, you know, one of the more defensive sectors tends to perform well in these types of environments, right? And we are starting to, we are starting to see, you know, that, um, that our performance, it is in the leading category in the sector rotational chart, but it is losing a little bit of momentum. But overall, if we take a look at the price action, I think it's still quite positive. We have 126 acting as a major area of support. Price to um, move higher with strong momentum, breaking above the 131 level. It has run into a bit of resistance here between that area between the 55 and 21 day exponential moving average but price action isn't really bearish it is somewhat almost consolidating maybe in a you know an intraday level you could almost say that it's actually pulled back a little bit finding support at 131 again like it did on monday sorry on friday and we may see a move continuation higher here for technology now if this 131 level could can be maintained i think there is some more upside here and i'd really be looking at around this 137 area as the next key resistance level. If we take a look at the momentum here, we have short momentum represented by this red line. It did reach an overbought condition and is now pulled back. But you know, um, longer term momentum is starting to improve here. So I do think that this pullback here and short term momentum won't um, last for too long and we may see continuation higher, which would provide a good catalyst from a technical perspective for uh, healthcare to continue higher. And taking a look at discretionary, I am a bit more on the bearish side for discretionary, despite the fact that we have seen a bit more momentum in recent days. Um, I just don't think the price action really confirms that increase in momentum that we are seeing. Um, and I do think that, you know, that momentum is going to be a bit more short lived. And if we take a look at the key levels here, you know, the one other key level that I, I would draw here is this 185 area, this 185 level. And we saw price did bounce higher, you know, with good momentum initially on this 172 area. It did run into resistance at its 21-day exponential moving average. And yesterday, once again, it touched that level, um, but rejected it and closed below 185, its major resistance area here. So for me, that does provide a bit more of a bearish setup, despite the increase in momentum on the relative rotation chart. It's not being confirmed on price action that much. And I do think from a risk reward perspective, now might be a good time to look at these um, at short positions within the discretionary sector. In terms of the next support levels, I'd actually be looking at the 176 level first before the 172. It did provide some support in the past. Um, and should that level break, uh, 172 would be the next level to be looking at here. But you know, should price actually break above this 185 level and we see the momentum in discretionary continue, I think that does provide the evidence that we need to see a move back to 191. So taking a look at, a, at some uh, subsectors of interest, starting off with JETS, which is a global airline ETF, or US global airline ETF, we can see here that, you know, this 22 area was re is a major, major uh, support level or previous support level turned resistance. We saw price break below that level, found support in 1950, and has since actually really struggled to break above or stay above that level. There was an initial breakout that was immediately, um, that was very short lived. Price did move back to this 1950 area and is now essentially moving sideways. But the reason I wanted to point this out, bring this out today was um, it is back at this area. We did see an intraday rejection yesterday of uh, 22, but let's see, you know, let's see what happens. Let's see over, over the next few days, if price breaks above this area again, I think that provides some evidence of a grind higher here for airlines, especially as we continue this reopening. You know, I do, airlines are still trading um, uh, at a, I don't want to say at a discount, but you know, now might be a good time 
to buy, look into airlines because they're trading so cheap. And I would really be looking at, at this ETF for a bit more confirmation because it provides a broad based exposure to the airline industry. And I'd be looking for a break above this 22 level here as confirmation for a bit more upside. I should actually say a break and price managed to stay above this level. So maybe break and a retest before a move higher here for airlines. And taking a look at semiconductors. So semiconductors make up a big part of the technology sector. We can see here in terms of price action, there was a strong um, move lower. Price did find support at this 250 level and immediately bounced higher. Now, the resistance level at 275 was initially broken, but it did run into resistance at its 21-day exponential moving average. And we are starting to see that loss of momentum here already. Yesterday, price rejected 275. Um, and so this does lead me to believe right now that if price cannot break above 275, that there may be another leg lower here on the cards for uh, the semiconductor industry. And the next support level I'll be looking at would really be at that 250 level once again. So taking a look at uh, some bullish market observations, first up I have is Amgen, which is part of the healthcare sector, which we know is one of the strongest sectors in the market right now. And taking a look at the price action, I think it's quite interesting. You know, I was interested in Amgen once it broke above 220 a few weeks ago. And while we did see some upside all the way to 236, that was short-lived. We saw an immediate uh, decline back to this 220 level. The price is managing to stay above this key 220 level. Even yesterday, it's a bounce higher from that level. So I do think, you know, from um, a risk-reward perspective, we may see much more consolidation, but from a risk-reward perspective, it does provide a good entry point because you can, you know, if you enter a long position here, should it break 220, that, that position becomes invalidated and it's not a big price to pay in, in the event that you're wrong. Um, in terms of the next resistance area, I'll be looking at around this, that 235 uh, area that the, pre the previous swing high, I should say. And should it break above that area in the next few weeks, we have 250 as a bit more of a major resistance area. As we can see on the weekly time frame, it has been acting as a major resistance area um, for multiple months. Taking a look at Take Two Interactive Software, um, you can see here you know, a strong break above 163, good momentum due to earnings. Yesterday, uh, not much of a bit of a doji candle there, so not much happening. But overall, you know, this is quite positive. Like we, we, we did see a strong move initially, uh, rejection at a 55 day exponential moving average, a bit of a pullback, and earnings maybe did provide a catalyst to break above this 163 area and continue higher. Um, should this momentum continue, I'd be looking at the next uh, key area, which would be the previous swing high at around this 183 level. And should that break, I'll be looking at, um, you know, the next area of major resistance between 196 and 192. And next we have Dollar Tree as a bullish market observation. A uh, reason I like Dollar Tree is we, we saw a strong uptrend, a bit of consolidation in recent weeks. And but price has found support at 124. Now it's bounced above that level on two occasions. And I would consider this area to be a minor key area. It has acted as resistance in the past and support in the past. But price yesterday did break above that area and broke above its 21 and 55 day exponential moving averages. I think from a short term perspective, you know, we uh, we could expect a bit more upside here for Dollar Tree and all the way to this 144 level. So a bit more of a shorter term outlook here. But I do think that there's a bit more upside over the next few days or maybe a couple of weeks even. Taking a look at Twitter. So Twitter, not, you know, not in a very good position. You know, we can see price action has been extremely poor and strong bearish trend. And over the last few weeks, so it price did pop back up to its 21-day exponential moving average. And it hasn't really been able to break above that area. But from a risk to reward perspective and as a possible bearish earnings play, I think Twitter is a great candidate because, um, you know, it did pop up ahead of earnings. And I, I think that, you know, earnings may provide that catalyst that's needed for a further decline here in price. Overall, price is on a bearish trend. And in terms of possible targets, 
I'd be looking at the weekly time frame, and I'd be looking at this major support level at around this 28, 80, 29 level for Twitter. But again, definitely a bit more of an earnings place, so a bit more risk, uh, just something to keep in mind of. And taking a look at Snap. So, you know, like Twitter, very bearish um, price action here over the last few months. And price did, um, well, initially got lower due to earnings, it reached 24 and immediately moved higher. And has now is now testing that $40 uh, minus support area, previous support area. And so far, it is, it is rejecting it over the last two sessions. From a risk reward perspective, you know, I do think this provides an excellent bearish opportunity. There's been no indication of a break of, of bearish structure just yet. And we are starting to see some evidence of bearish price action at a previous support level. Taking a look at the weekly time frame, you know, I, I do expect, should, should we see more bearish price action? I'd like to see Snap probably decline a bit further to around this 27 area. Um, between this 27 and 21 area, we can see that that has been another trading range in the past on the weekly time frame, And the next major area would be at 1650, although I doubt that Snap would decrease that decline that, um, to that level. But the next area of support would be at around 27. And taking a look at lows, which part of the discretionary sector, which you know we did go over quite bearish. Um, we can see here a bit of a topping formation, right? We saw price uh, break above this 208 support level, very strong momentum, and essentially formed a bit of a topping formation between 240 and 260. It ran out of steam, momentum, momentum started to decrease, and finally that 240 level of support was broken to, to the downside. Price has come back to retest that level. It has now failed to break back above, and price action is quite bearish right now. I do think that the next area of support would be a good target here for lows, and I'll be looking at around back to this 210, 208 area of support as a possible target um, in the coming weeks or so. With that, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great trading week ahead. Goodbye.